Mr. Chancellor. It is my honor to present to you Mr. Kenneth Woods. <laughs> the other way. An outstanding and creative philanthropist, investment expert, and community activist. Mr. Woods is a leader in the investment management field with significant experience as a pension plan fiduciary. Ayant amorcé sa carrière par un stage d'avocat à Montréal chez Touche Ross, devenu maintenant Deloitte, il a obtenu un titre de comptable agréé en 1978, puis il quitta la comptabilité publique pour devenir partenaire fondateur de TAL, Gestion globale d'actifs. Sous sa direction, TAL est vite devenue l'une des firmes de placement les plus importantes et les plus prospères du Canada. Since retiring from TAL in 1998, Mr. Woods has devoted much of his time and energy to community service, philanthropy, and nonprofit work in Vancouver and in Montreal. Through his charitable organization, the Flash Foundation, Mr. Woods supports a wide range of social sectors, including youth, arts and culture, health and education. Mr. Woods previously served as director of the Vancouver General Hospital and the University of British Columbia Foundation, and is past chair of the Children's Arts Umbrella Foundation. Kenneth Woods received his MBA from Concordia in 1975 and is a longtime supporter of higher education. In the year 2000, he helped establish the Kenneth Woods Portfolio Management Program at the John Molson School of Business in honor of the late professor, Calvin C. Potter, a much admired member of the Department of Finance who inspired generations of business students. The program was launched to provide a select group of undergraduate finance students at John Molson with vital hands-on training in portfolio management. As the program's academic director since 2013, I have had the opportunity to witness firsthand the concrete impact of this amazing initiative. Our students gain invaluable experience working with real portfolio money worth today more than $2.6 million, having grown from the original $1 million donation from Mr. Woods. The 120 alumni of the Kenneth Woods Portfolio Management Program have secured excellent careers in capital markets as equity analysts, investment bankers, and venture capitalists. We find these alumni across Canada, in New York, in Europe, and the rest of the world. I can unequivocally say that Kenneth Woods started something 17 years ago that radically changed the lives of so many of our students for the better. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of Senate and the Board of Governors, it is my privilege and honor to present to you Mr. Kenneth Woods so that you may confer upon him the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa. It gives me great pleasure to ask Dr. Woods to address the convocation. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. Chairman of the Board of Governors, Mr. President, Vice Chancellor, honored platform guests, graduating class, family, and friends. C'est un honor pour moi. Ici, ça me fait plaisir 
and uh, it's really a great honor to receive this uh, honorary degree and I'm really deeply appreciated of the uh, the recognition that it represents it, it's also um, a delighted to share the honor with my friend Sebastian Van Berkham who is a friend and investment colleague who has done so much for the university and for the community. Um, a couple of things that um, Rena wouldn't know about me, which isn't really relevant, but it tells you a little bit about me before I really start my speech. Um, when I was, I can remember things that happened a long time ago, but don't ask me uh, where I left my keys this morning. I remember when I was about seven years old, my parents used to go grocery shopping every Saturday. And um, we were not a wealthy family. And I was such a good boy one summer that my mother took me over to the ice cream stand and asked me if I'd like to have <clears throat> an ice cream. And I told her I'd rather have the nickel the five cents was more important to me than the ice cream. So I think that was kind of something about money management was in my future. Another little story that I remember was when I was 11 years old in grade five, my elementary school teacher wanted to keep the students together for grade six. And um, we had to convince, the parents had to convince the principal that that was a good thing. And so the principal agreed, but he said, you know, and my parents were like grade eight education, the principal told them that they shouldn't get their expectations up too high for the students. And he would let them do this, but uh, he had been a principal of this element, large elementary school in the east end of Vancouver for many years. And there had not been one student that had ever gone to university, um, male, female, uh, let alone graduating from university. So that was kind of the context of the way it was back then, it was a few years ago. And so it's really an honor for me, and I think that um, my parents and the principal, they're probably not alive right now, but hopefully they're uh, understanding that uh, I did graduate from university and here I am, so that's very good. <laughs> So I'd like to congratulate you all. This is a really major milestone in your life. And there's, uh, I think, some 500 of you graduating today, uh, this morning. And uh, you're, you're it's one of the finest commerce schools in the world. And you're undoubtedly very deserving of your degrees and, and to a certain extent privileged. Uh, we know one thing for sure. You're very smart, and smart enough to be successful. However, success in the future will depend on some other things, luck, good fortune, your contacts, and a number of other factors. Last fall, uh, I was fortunate enough to, um, thanks to the program director, uh, Rena Atanasiatis, she got us in to see a legendary investor, Warren Buffett, and he spent, uh, time with our 20 some odd students and some students from some other schools and talked to us a little bit about life and about friends and about investments. Um, one of the key messages that he said was that you students are all young enough to adapt yourself to the environment and to maybe learn a little bit about the traits that are important for success that are of a non-academic nature. And it was a really interesting thing. He said that if you look at the five or so people uh, in your cohort group, and pick the one person that you think is going to be truly successful and identify the three or four traits that, make the, that made you pick them and see if you have those traits. And if you don't, what do you have to do to attain them? And so that got me thinking. It was a cute way of saying that there are many more important factors to success. Now, I didn't do that uh, consciously, but I realized that there were some limitations. And so I looked to partner with people that had some of those traits. 
So I've identified five traits. These are my own, it's not a scientific study, um, but I hope you'll find them interesting. The first trait to success is attitude. Having a positive attitude can lead to positive results. Some people see roadblocks, other people see opportunity. The difference between adversity and adventure is attitude. Number two, determination. There will be a lot of people that will tell you that it can't be done. Sometimes they might even be right, but you should keep trying. You'll probably fail a lot, but at one point you will succeed. And that success, like Mr. Edison, will be built upon all those lessons that you learned from failure. Item number three, perspiration. Now the Chancellor, um, it's a very rare thing, but he mentioned something about Thomas Edison. And my mother used to quote to me something from Thomas Edison. Oh, and by the way, you should always listen to your mother. <laughs> But he was famous for saying that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. And I think that's true. So be inspired, but work hard. It's also not how hard, how long you work, but how smart you work. It's important. And if you enjoy what you're doing, as obviously Sebastian does, it won't seem like work. And in fact, you will have a great sense of, of accomplishment and achievement and satisfaction. Uh, number four, temperament. Uh, things don't always go the way that you expect them to be. And uh, from an investment point of view, some people think that the difference between a good investor and a great investor is temperament. And I'm going to just paraphrase uh, Mr. Warren Buffett again and he said that uh, his investment style, to a certain extent, is be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Number five, integrity. It takes a lifetime to build a reputation, but only a short time to destroy it. So try always to do what's right. Now, you know that I was fortunate enough to have Dr. Potter, Professor Potter, as my mentor and professor here at uh, Concordia University, and he helped change my career path, and I'm forever indebted to his teachings and for that um, uh, advice that he gave me. And I'll never forget one of his teachings was his definition of what constitutes a good financial transaction. And that is that uh, both parties are better off after the transaction than they were before. So in all your dealings, you should be honest and fair, and you'll see that the business comes back to you. Uh, my success has, to a certain extent, been the result of those attributes and associating with others that had the skills that I didn't possess. You should choose your friends and your associates wisely, because uh, they will have an influence on you, and if, and if you know, you'll probably adopt some of their habits and hopefully they'll be good habits. So it's very important to have uh, good friends and, and very good associates. I, I would never have been as successful in my career without the expertise of my three original partners. Nor would the Kenneth Woods Portfolio Management Program been as successful without the leadership of the two program directors and it's so special for me to have Professor Abraham Brot here, who was the original program director for 12 years, and then uh, current program director, Rina Atanasiadis here, to uh, introduce me and gown me. It's a very special honor. But the program wouldn't have been successful without their leadership and hard work. Nor would it have been successful without the client committee participation and the mentors. And the uh, wonderful support of the university, from the president, to the dean, to the alumni department office, and all uh, the other people that have been involved in the program over the last uh, 17 or 18 years. One final thought. 
along the way, do remember how fortunate you are. Try to help the world make a better place. You know, I often think uh, what my life would have been if I had been born somewhere else. And, you know, we're so fortunate to be able to uh, be in Canada and uh, to attend this wonderful university. And if you get to my age and uh, you don't have any friends and people don't think very highly of you, I mean, everybody has a lot of friends, but I'm talking about true friends. And just to diverse, there was a study that was done, and don't ask me where it was, but they said that a couple of decades ago, the average person had four really good friends, and today it's down to 1.8. And these, you know, social media is helping, but we're talking about true friends. And so in my sort of personal life scorecard, if you, at my age, don't have any true friends, and people don't think very highly of you, and maybe you haven't done very much for the world or the community, then, you know, I don't know what your balance sheet looks like, but I really question, you know, whether you've been a success. So there are other things to think about. Um, there are a couple of people that I've met. One lady yesterday was talking about taking in a couple of foster children. I have a friend in Vancouver who adopted a young um, Asian child, had some medical problems, and she was able to bring him to Vancouver and take care of his medical problems, and now he's enrolled in a, a private elementary school. And right now we have two students from our program that are on the way to Africa, to Ghana, to teach uh, 30 orphans um, entrepreneurial study. So a lot of people are giving back even today at your young age we find a way. And so um, I really think that you know you should give while you live. And give of your time and at, at one point maybe give of your money. And if you do it early you'll have the time such as I have to see the results and, and to really enjoy the results. So in closing permit me to um, talk a little bit about opportunities. The world today, we have 7.4 billion people on this planet, and if we don't have a pandemic or, or a significant world war, the forecast is there will be 10 billion people by the year 2050. When you think about it, that's a massive increase in the number of people that will be on this planet in a very, very short period of time. And it's going to cause uh, some issues, but for you it's going to be, you know, tremendous opportunity. Uh, we have a uh, demographics, you know, the aging population, my baby boom generation. Um, there's going to be a huge transition in the developed countries, China, Japan, um, Europe, the United States and Canada. Those will create health care issues for sure, but tremendous opportunities. In addition to that, you have artificial intelligence and we're going to have uh, uh, driverless cars and trucks and maybe even buses and who knows what else. Robotics, you know, the, the forecast is that robotics will be replacing workers and the workforce, while the population is booming, the workforce will actually decline. So the opportunities that these give you uh, are multiple and you have the tools for success. So it's an amazing time to be alive and uh, we're expecting you to take advantage of these opportunities. So congratulations, uh, be successful, be happy, be passionate, work hard. I hope you uh, have an opportunity to give back to society, give back to Concordia. And for many, many years, I really hope you have many, 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 much more than 1.8 good friends, because that's important. <laughs> So congratulations and good luck to you all. Dr. Woods, thank you so much for your wise words, your strong message and for giving back to Concordia to such a great extent. 
I, we did share Dr. Potter, uh, Porter, I should say, and um, there is one other professor at Concordia who I think uh, gave us all a message that's an extremely important one that Dr. Woods addressed in his remarks. And he said, machines depreciate, people appreciate, invest in people. And that's what I hope your employers will do with you in the years ahead and that you will do with your employees in the years following. It's probably the most important part and it's a thread that actually followed through with Dr. Von Berkham and Dr. Woods' comments here today. So I thank you very, very much.